Hi, Paul again. In, in the previous video, we showed how sensitization can develop and result in persistent patterns of brain activity that are undesirable. They're saying danger, 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 creating the experience of pain even in the absence of continuing signals from the body. In this video, we're going to learn the sources for that persistent and annoying and uh, chronic pain so that you can figure out your own formula for reducing it. Now, there are five main sources for sensitization. Signals, thoughts, emotions, benefits, and associations. Let's talk about those one at a time. Signals. Pretty much everyone starts out by thinking that their chronic pain is due to signals from the body. After all, that's where the pain is felt, um, that's where the pain started. Imagine that's the problem. But in my experience, it's very rare that that's the only problem for pain that's persisted three months or more. Second one is thoughts. Thoughts about your pain can really fuel this. For example, um, if you think that you can't recover from back pain because you looked at an MRI and it showed that you had disc degeneration, it might be helpful for you to learn that 88% of people age 60 with no back pain have disc degeneration. Or you might imagine you can't recover from your pain because it's due to an injury. Well, it might be helpful to know that when sensitization doesn't develop, the pain from injuries resolves well before the injury even heals. For example, I have a skin cancer cut out of my forehead. It hurts for a day or two, but it takes weeks to heal. Number three, emotions. Um, emotions can uh, really escalate pain and maintain this chronic pain experience. Uh, you can see it perhaps most clearly during the escalation phase. Um, that is, when you're at a level of reasonably high sensitization and there's just some minor sensation, a finger being bent back a little, that tinge of pain can escalate into a major pain experience, which I'm showing here the escalation in just a few seconds. It can take minutes or even hours. What goes on during that? Well, in my case, what would happen is I'd get some minor tinge of pain, say putting my hand a little bit too high above my shoulder, and then I'd start to get anxiety. You know, oh no, is it, is it back again? You know, this doesn't feel good. And fear, I'm afraid this is going to grow into a major pain experience. If this gets bigger pain, I'm not going to be able to go to work today, and I need to go to work today. And, and so that kind of and then the pain gets worse. So that kind of escalation, that vicious cycle of pain and negative emotions can play a role during the escalation phase and in maintaining chronic pain. Um, it also works for thoughts. So you get a little bit of pain and then if you have a thought like, um, uh, why is this pain, why do I have this pain, why me, you know, is this never going to go away, is the rest of my life going to be like this? Thoughts like that can escalate the pain. It's wonderful if you can substitute uh, safe thoughts like, um, this is nothing, it's sore but safe, I'm sore but safe, I'm sore but safe. I say that to myself a lot, sore but safe, motion is lotion. Um, to just let these minor sensations be what they are, minor sensations that don't need to escalate into chronic pain. Um, other emotions can escalate pain and maintain it too. For instance, anger is especially effective. Um, Judy, not her real name, every time she feels a pain in her neck, she gets angry at the driver who rear-ended her many years ago, and the pain grows. Number four, benefits. Um, for some people, there are benefits to having chronic pain. For instance, in my case, there was a certain class of social obligations that I was very uncomfortable with, but um, I continued to do until I could use the excuse of chronic pain not to do them. Um, in order to recover from my chronic pain, I needed to figure out other ways to say no to those obligations. Other examples might be um, someone who uh, 
doesn't like their job. With chronic pain, they can avoid going to work. Or someone who's been in a, a, an extreme exercise program and basically w wants a break from it. And with chronic pain, they don't need to do this extreme exercise program anymore. So you can ask yourself, are there benefits from my chronic pain? And are there ways I could get these benefits without chronic pain? Number five, associations. Sometimes associations to previous trauma can be a fuel source for chronic pain. Trauma is a situation in which there was a negative outcome and you felt relatively helpless. Now sometimes associations to previous trauma can bring up pain in the present even though there's no real danger in the present. For example, an authority figure in the present might bring up associations to an abusive person during your childhood. So, how do we decrease chronic pain from these um, sources? Well, start with number one. If you think your chronic pain is due to signals from the body, if you haven't already, go to a physician and be sure that you don't have a torn ligament, a torn tendon, cancer, broken bones, something that won't heal well without help. If no, there's nothing obviously wrong, um, then you can begin a wonderful journey of exploration. You can start by clicking the show more in the description of this video and following some of the links that sound interesting to you to get more information on the topics that I've talked about with you today. I want to encourage you, if you're in chronic pain, you can greatly reduce or eliminate it entirely by reducing your sensitization. Thank you.